Ooh, what is up you guys and welcome to my draft analysis for the Valhalla Pokemon League this season uh, being season 2. For you guys who are not aware, Valhalla Pokemon League or VPL is actually my creation for um, a created late generation 6 was basically a response to the UCL format and uh, I want to try it myself and I really really had a rough time finding leagues with that concept in mind. And um, yeah, I wanted to try it and I wanted to create something with that in mind and we did that. Uh, the league itself was kind of a success though being late of course in uh, <laughs> in this kind of environment kind of enforces it to of course not be too um, successful because of Pugtuber. I had a bit of a weird focus and I'm glad I dropped that. Uh, I had a f focus on of course, you know, only recruiting Pugtubers and quite honestly, if I want to have a league where I'm just having fun then, you know, just aiming for pocket tubers and, and not you know good people in general uh, makes it kind of tough. So this season we are actually up the ante a little bit. We actually went from not to believe, 12 people to 16. And uh, no, 20. We actually went for 20 people. That's actually kind of insane. Uh, a lot of people here are from an um, older, of course, league I was a part of called the Lithio Bell Association or the LBA. Uh, a lot of great people from there and a few people from the MBA which also is a league that I had a lot of fun with and a few guys from the TBU and this is basically it. Uh, the draft format itself is point based and uh, it wasn't that the first season but we decided to take that route mainly because it made the league more fun actually. The concept itself is you buy your Pokemons um, and it's very hard to get a very very strong team though clearly if you look at my team here it seems that that's not completely not out of the window. Uh, but that was basically what was going at, that you go to try to uh, draft as, as strong Pokemon as possible, clearly, but at the same time you need to kind of <laughs> not over-budget yourself, and there was a focus on that you could draft 8 to 10 Pokemon, but 10 Pokemon was the maximum, 8 was the minimum, uh, so basically if you want a really, really strong team, you were very likely to get not as many Pokemon, so with that said, uh, I'm quite happy with my draft, though. I think a few drafts gotten stronger, but as you guys saw in the intro, the main focus of this draft is of course Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko is probably one of the best Pokemon to the generation, and I really wanted to uh, have a team with Tapu Koko as my front figure. So we don't have a Mega Pokemon this time around, which is um, which is kind of new, but at the same time, I don't believe you need a Mega Pokemon to do well, and I don't think we're forced a Mega Pokemon either due to well, there are not being enough Mega Pokemons available, so that's actually kind of interesting. Now, with that said, we're going to go over, of course, my picks one by one and just talk about them and why they were drafted. Tapu Koko, I don't believe, need any introduction. Uh, very, very speedy Pokemon and is the speediest Pokemon on my team. And just in general, great move pool, great defensive option, has Roost and Grass Knot, and um, yeah, does fairly well. It's definitely one of those Pokemon that I think do really well in the format. Uh, Electric Terrain really helps out for, of course, other Pokemon was drafted. My next pick after was actually the list score, and uh, for many reasons, but the foremost reason is after I ma made an actual episode about who is really better between the list score and Landorus, I realized that list score is probably pretty darn underrated. It has a lot of defensive and offensive options, and together with, of course, setting up self rocks and being able to defog if it's forced to, and of course, with the defensive option that is. Uh, poison heal. Uh, Gliscor can be extremely versatile and have, very, very tough to deal with. With only really two big issues, we've been, of course, ice and water. This typing combination is very, very tough to be dealing with. And while Landers, of course, being better between the two offensively matched up, Gliscor has more options, and that is what we're going to do with it. Um, gotten greatly fond of Gliscor, very much so lately. And not the defensive set, that is, more the versatile for the focus on the focused um, offensive sets. So, yeah, Gliscor is definitely up there, it's one of my favorites. And I was really glad I got that. And my next pick here afterwards was um, Alola Muck, actually. It didn't become too expensive in this format, and I'm kind of surprised it didn't. Uh, definitely going to be revised for next season, though I couldn't. I waited to get it because I really wanted others and someone else to get it, but at the time they were on third round, I was like, that yeah, now now I gotta get it. And people get to use their snipe action, but that's the case. Um, snipe action, by the way, is uh, that you could cut in line once, grab a Pokemon, but um, 
if you use it, then Benzie lost a perk later on in the draft. But uh, yeah, um, Muck is one of those Pokemon that I've been very, very firm with before he was released. It's not going to be that viable and got to eat up my own words, basically, because damn, th this thing does shake things kind of nicely. It's special defense to get it with a very, very high HP. I made this Pokemon very, very ferocious to be dealing with, and I do believe if you focus on just Muck itself, Muck's only issue was it was a single type poison type, but it had definitely the right type of the stat distribution. Muck kind of enforces this. The little Muck part really, really enforces that it didn't need any kind of boost in stats or anything like that. It just needed a better combination, and Dark Poison is just that. Then afterwards, I actually decided to get the CGI and I actually sniped Lucy, huh? <laughs> Which was very, very important. Now, the Sidjoy was not an important Pokemon by any chance here or anything like that, but I really just wanted the Sidjoy. I really wanted to use it. I wanted to have it as a Pokemon from my sixth generation team because I was really unsure how many Alolan Pokemon I was gonna get. Um, the reason I mentioned this is because when I drafted in TBU, I realized I did only get Buswool as. Um, as a Pokemon, of course, in my team for the newest generation, and somewhere down the line, you kind of want to clickbait, you kind of want Pokemon from the new generation. So, the Sidjoy was one of those Pokemon that I really want to try to use, basically because of the Ghost combination with the Grass and, of course, Spirit Shackle. It has a lot of offensive options, and, of course, with Defog and Roosting, it actually utilizes itself even beyond that. So, I'm really looking forward to using it in general. Um, my next Pokemon after was Kubelion, and yeah, Kubelion is a Pokemon I've used quite a lot. I uh, used it previous season in the VPL, but also used it in TBU and in an LBA. Kubelion is one of my most dear-to-heart Pokemon, mainly because of its mixed offensive, very defensive stats, and a very, very speedy mon. And now with Tabu Coco setting up, of course, Electric Rain, the Volt Switch this Pokemon can do now is go into Hurt, and that is... Mm, 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 they'll have that. So, I don't think it need any introduction. As Stealth Rocks, it does well. It's a scary mon, sets up against anything. Um, looking forward to using it, as ever. Uh, after that, we actually got a Raquinid, and uh, yeah. Here's the thing. I was very, very split between Golisopod and Arachnid. I'm definitely going to get Colizopod if it is a Season 3. But this type of combination is more and more important. Uh, no matter what generation, this type of combination is always important. And it's mainly because what it can do against, of course, a very tough combo. That is, of course, uh, Ice and Ground. Uh, Mammoth Swine situation. We have something called a Mammo issue in draft format. And that is what these guys solve. Even though... Your Arachnid is weak to rocks, it still is one of the few Pokemon that are very, very, very little threatened by Mammoth Swine. Even if it does pack Stone Edge or Rock Slide, it won't necessarily hurt it all the match. And of course, with uh, the Water Bubble ability, uh, I also have another Resist to Fire. And of course, I can't get burned, making even this Pokemon much, much more scarier because it has a kind of adaptability going on with it liquidation so yeah love this pokemon definitely looking forward to using it and uh, i'm i'm pretty sure it should be successful in this kind of draft format it is the slowest pokemon on my draft sadly but at the same time these pokemon don't need to be that um that fast when they are that bulky i mean there are very few things that knocks this thing out on one shots um so yeah looking forward to using it uh, next Pokemon draft was a Delphox, and I actually drafted this in first season two. I'm getting a lot of love for Delphox. Delphox is one of those Pokemon that has a very strong speed tier, one or two, uh, one or four. I mean, uh, I'll speed in the likes of Garchomp, for example. Outside of that, Delphox kind of viability really spiked now with the C moves introduced. Delphox has a very very weird C move pool, and you know, to get with likes of Shockwave, for example, making this Pokemon. Kind of steady. It definitely is one of those Pokemon that I do believe do better in League format, mainly because it is a Pokemon that usually struggles with a lower type of um, offensive pool to go with. But now that you can be selective and you know have, don't have the wheel, dual stab, and grass knot, this Pokemon can kind of force itself to be a lot stronger. So I have high hopes for Delphox. Plus a Will O Whisper. I actually realized that grabbing a Ghost typing that doesn't. Yes, Will-O-Wisp, yeah, Decidueye, you kind of suck to some extent. So, 
we kind of got that too. So will is always important. So you don't have to, of course, go over the obligatory skull burn, which in the end, you know, since I'm having a rack on it, it seems very unlikely. So yeah, Delphox, super cool. Um, after that, we actually drafted uh, the Cryogonal. And Cryogonal is also one of those Pokemon that got a boost this generation. It got a boost in its HP, it got a boost in, of course, its defenses. While it's not the strongest guy around, it has something that I do believe this team needs. That is, outside of actually having two defaults at the moment, I do lack a Rapid Spinner. Cryogonal, not the steadiest of self rockers, I was going to say, but then the spinner is what I want. Being weak to self rocks, however, is a different story and something that I need to... Uh, manage myself with but Kragnog has one big edge and it goes for every ice type that learns this and that is freeze dry that means a pokemon such as of course swampert quagsire uh golisopod i was gonna say but of course i mean gastrodon has no way in hell of actually forcing this pokemon out um and it does hurt it has a very very decent of course special attack of 95 base and then we have of course a very very speedy speed here Together with something that I think is horrendous, and that is, of course, its special defense 135. So, while it does have a bad defenses or HP and defense, even though we got a boost on it, it still has the viability to some extent to kind of recover and enforce itself. So, Cryogonal, really looking forward to it. And also, like I said, Speeder Pokemon just kind of fits me well, and Cryogonal is, uh, while being a very, very generic and boring Pokemon by design, does have that move pull to do well, and I'm definitely looking forward to using it here in the future. Uh, after this, I actually got Rhyperior, and hear me out on this. Rhyperior does solve what kind of Gliscor doesn't, and that is actually enforcing itself a lot in a lot of other moves. And of course, with Solid Rock, Rhyperior kinda, kinda pushes it a little bit. I do believe, actually, that Rhyperior is speeder than Arachnid, which is just kind of funny. But Rhyperior is also a Pokemon that I didn't get last season, but I was definitely going to get it. Uh, Rhyperior is one of my favorite Aryu Pokemon, and definitely is one of those Pokemons that it can maybe not stall anything, and it definitely its typing doesn't enforces it to become, you know, larger than life or anything like that. But the punishment it does take, it takes really well, and with the high, of course, 130 in uh, attack, it can actually KO a lot of things easily. There are very few Pokemon that can actually hurt this and survive it. Rhyperior definitely is one of the few Pokemon that needs to be willed down to fall. It usually can take one or two hits before falling and since it has so high attack it usually kills something in return. So Rhyperior is just that good. So I'm really glad I got it as my team and very surprised it was actually around that late because um, well let's face it it's super good. Uh, my last Pokemon was actually Tauros. And yeah, Tauros, I used him last season. was definitely one of my MVPs. Um, I didn't grab Stoutland, which is kind of surprising, you know, Scandinavian Stoutland and whatnot. But here's the thing. If I don't get anything that is sand invoking, I'm not going to get Stoutland. Uh, Tauros just does Stoutland's job slightly better. Uh, though clearly Stoutland is way better than Stannis enforces it, but you know, we have a Sheer Force Life Orb combination and Tauros gets Body Slam this generation, which means that it doesn't have to rely on Rock Climb and we have a special move pool that it can utilize through the Life or Sheer Force boost. So even if it'll have a very, very bad special attack, it can still utilize it and of course if Pokemon such as, of course, Guard Jump is a matchup, then that's gonna be when it killed by Ice Beam because of the extra 60% boost out of nowhere. But yeah, that's pretty much the size of things. My team is fairly speedy, which I really like. I have a few Pokemon that clearly are, of course, a bit of the slow side. Of course, Araquanade, Rhyperior, Muck, and... Uh... Oh, they're actually all of it. The situation is kind of slow, I guess. But outside of that, we have actually a pretty steady speed here. I do believe Gliscor is actually my fifth slowest. It's 9 to 5 by speed. That should tell something, really. Um... My hopes for this season, this is a very long season this time because we kind of felt that it was, well, it was fun to go longer this time around mainly because we had such a g good gang and it looks like with a team-based situation we're going on here, being that we actually have, um, ooh, how do you say, we're 20 people and we're four teams, so five people in each team and it basically meant that it felt like this league can go on for a bit longer and we could have a lot more fun and that is, in the end, the focus of this league. So, in the end, my focus here, or rather, 
my my hopes for the league is of course to win it but and at the same time i kind of want the success to be pushed on to the others one around here uh because um like i said it's a long league and the playoff or 16 player playoffs is actually kind of great and um the winner gets some money which is also cool i don't get the money though i'm i'm kind of out with the money so if i win i basically just reduce my losses <laughs> But yeah, um, the concept itself is just, I really like it, and um, I just have to, have to have fun here, really. I, I kind of felt that every league I've been a part of has been some kind of training, and this is kind of what it all builds up for. Um, I kind of believe that both TBU and, of course, uh, MPA has, um, it's a lot of seri most, a lot more serious than other leagues. Which kind of takes away the fun factor a little bit. So this league is definitely more focused on just relaxing and just having fun. There are some competitive aspects. There definitely are. But it isn't as punishing. Uh, at least till playoff, it's actually still kind of kind of relaxed. So you kind of can rely on your teammates to, if they do well, you are not out of the running. Which is something that is, um, I think that's a relief for many. That A bad game doesn't mean that you're just not going to make playoff anymore. Um, and with so many matches going on, you know, 12 weeks and 10, 10 matches, 12 weeks, it's going to be, um, it's going to be a big chance of actually making a playoff, no matter how well or bad you do. But yeah, with that said, uh, I'm going to upload a course every, every time I have a wife a battle area. There's not going to be necessarily a schedule here, but we are also going to upload every battle that are not made by pocket tubers or as many as possible, at least. For each week, they're going to be guest narrated by different players, but I'm going to be one of the next guest narrator. And then we're going to have Ashton Akai, Six Feet Hag, Blue Sea, uh, Verdlet, hopefully, is going to join for some narration. That's going to be interesting if he, if he decides to join it, of course. Uh, only talk about it briefly. But yeah, that's going to be very, very interesting, also. So you don't have to join any like kind of other channel. I'm not going to start off like a VPL channel or anything like that, mainly because I don't. I don't see the point of starting off a new channel for the same content I was going to upload anyway. So it's going to be here. Feel free to watch it if you want to see it. And these games are going to be as competitive as they get. So like I said, though, it is a bit of a relaxed zone. But at the same time, the people that are competitive players in this league are going to provide, of course, battles. And there is just no way going around that. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be my wrap up. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode and it's a bit stiff. I know that being super lazy with the content today and it's mainly because I'm still kind of sick, but I still want to provide something because my channel has been kind of dead. So, you know, share for us. It's going to name in Stoutlands. And of course, share for my teammates, being of course, Green Scrafty, Mad Young, Hannah Panna and Jabril, who are tremendous players who hopefully can, you know, I can rely on them on my shoulders when I mess up, which I can do a lot. Anyway, guys, thank you, of course, so much for watching, and I'll see you next video. Until then, take care. Bye.